Hey, what's up, Improvement Warrior? Jason Young, back once again. Welcome to Improvement Warrior Podcast, episode number 27. This is the webinar that I just did tonight, October 27, 2022, in, the, in my private group, Improvement Warrior University, making the strongest version of you. It goes over the 10 superfoods that you should be eating in your nutrition plan and also your children's super plan. Because remember, whatever is good for the adult is good for the child. Whatever is good for the child is good for the adult. Whatever is bad for the adult and child is both bad for both of them. Okay, but um, yeah, so hope you enjoy this one and uh, let me know what you think and uh, if you have any other food that you want reviewed and to see whether or not they should be in your nutrition plan, let me know. Questions, comments, leave it in the wherever you're watching this or show notes for this one will be 10 superfoods. Improvementwarriorfitness.com slash 10 superfoods. Otherwise, uh, we're always looking for ratings and to help this show get out there and of course, join the group so you're in it. And I won't be podcasting all of the webinars. There'll just be a a slew of the webinars in the group, so you can go there and watch them anytime that you please. Plus, I have all the other free Improvement Warrior University webinars in there as well. So that's Improvement Warrior University or ImprovementWarriorFitness.com/slash/iwufb and. That's it. Show notes, again, will be at the improvementwarriorfitness.com slash superfoods. And thank you very much for watching, listening, share this out to whoever you feel needs to hear it, because I do go into a lot of um, circadian nutrition and circadian, and a little bit into your circadian biology. Of course, I cannot not talk about the sun, because any diet without the sun is crap. I'll leave you with that. Enjoy the show or webinar. Have a great day. Stay strong. Stay positive. Be the improvement warrior. Hey, what's up? Improvement warrior, Jason Yun, back with you again. Welcome to this week's Improvement Warrior University webinar of the week. This one is called the 10 superfoods that should be in yours and your kid's nutrition plan. So, what are the superfoods? Well, before we get into the exact superfoods, let's talk about, um, actually no, let's just get into the 10 superfoods because there's nothing else to talk about. That's why we're here to talk about these. So. Obviously, with just 10, I had to choose carefully. There was many foods that I eat on a regular basis that was omitted from this list, but I basically chunked it down to the most important foods. And as I'm going, we'll talk about circadian nutrition. Should you be eating this at in this season? or that in that season, and we'll talk about that. So, number one, and to start, uh, well, number one is number one. So it's the number one food all humans should be eating, regardless of how you feel about it, and regardless of how you, um, a lot of people will say, ew, don't like that. And what is it? It is seafood, okay, because DHA, DHA is the number one nutrient that we need to be consuming. And um, reason being is basically DHA is, um, well, I'll say this before I get into any, any foods, any further foods. Any diet, well, let's get rid of the word diet anyway. So, no dieting. 
So any nutrition plan should include the sun. Any nutrition plan that omits the sun is a um, is going to be a band aid, and eventually the the what's the word I'm looking for the inflammation the uh, the gash or the the thing you're trying to cover up with the band aid it's going to gush and it's going to get bigger and bigger and then eventually the blood and the guts and all the stuff is going to start falling out and you're going to be falling apart with no sun. And that's one thing. DHA needs the sun. The sun needs DHA. Um, oxygen needs DHA. DHA needs oxygen. They are all combined. So photons from the sun are, they only interact with one thing, and that is electrons. All food breaks down to electrons. Well, emitting protein. So all carbohydrates and all fats break down to electrons and protons. So life is fundamentally electrons, protons, and photons. But photons, so sun's rays, can only interact with electrons. And when they do, they each electron is filled with, each electron is the same in the universe, except for the light that fills it. So the light is going to have a different frequency, and it's going to have a different excitation, and that's going to be delivering different energy and information to our cells. So without that, DHA is the catcher of that. So DHA helps us catch more electrons, which helps us decipher the photons, which helps us um, drive forward and move by bio biology forward and bring us to health. And without that, we get brought to disease quicker. Okay. Um, so basically, DHA is a collector of electrons. If you don't collect electrons, you're, you're not going to have energy. So uh, electrons are basically free energy. And without that free energy, nothing can happen. Okay. If you don't have energy, you're going to be looking for it elsewhere. So you're going to be looking for it, coffee. You're going to be looking at looking for it through workouts, looking for it through carbohydrates, okay? Carbohydrates when you shouldn't be eating them. Carbohydrates at a season, processed carbohydrates, because they give you the feeling of a quick ATP boost, which is energy. Calories are energy. So, um, yeah, if you don't have that energy, natural energy, you're going to be looking for it elsewhere. So you should always be collecting electrons. And food is one way we collect electrons. And DHA is the best. Let's say DHA just has to be in your body. It has to be eaten consistently in order to catch the electrons and continue the cycle. Okay. All right. That was number one. And uh, just a history lesson on DHA. So DHA showed up about 580 to 600, 650 million years ago in the Cambrian explosion. That was, that was when all complex life started showing up on the planet. And when that happened, there was two, three things that happened. So one, oxygen showed up for the first time. Two, DHA showed up at the same time. Oxygen, DHA together. And also from the sun, UV light started showing up. Coincidence for all three? No. Okay. All three of those are necessary for life. Somebody tells you UV light is bad, that's a person you need to stop listening to because they're full of crap. All right. Um, C, number two is sea vegetables. Okay. And the reason is iodine. Okay. So iodine is it's the number one trace mineral that we need. So there's governments all over the place that um mandate iodine be put into certain things because if you do not have it you'll have cretinism you'll have deformed babies you'll have um dumb retarded babies um so yeah it's super super important uh one of the best ways to get it is through seafood but even better way to get it is through sea vegetables so kelp seaweed um, the 
Japanese knotweed. So there's all types. So whatever just whatever grows under the oceans and the waters is a sea vegetable. So um, I talk about um, it's number one to any optimal health plan. So T3, which is the thyroid hormone, and then TSH, which is the, which is the thyroid stimulating hormone. The meme I probably share the most of is a meme that says T3 in optimal levels, T3 plus vitamin A converts to LDL cholesterol, which goes on to make pregnant alone, which goes on to make every single sex steroid hormone. Okay. So anybody that tells you LDL cholesterol is bad, is the bad cholesterol, that's someone you need to stop listening to as well. Um, so iodine is critical for oxidation protection of uh, PUFAs used in the brain, so polyunsaturated fatty acids. It is the best protector of all lipids in all cells. And it acts basically as a coolant in the hottest parts of the nerve synapse, and it protects DHA oxidation to preserve signaling until the immune system can come and help. So that's one reason I don't recommend fish oil. Okay, because when you have fish oil, you subtract the iodine, you subtract copper, you subtract selenium, you subtract iron, you subtract the B vitamins, you subtract basically how DHA came in its evolutionary package. Okay, so your body isn't stupid. Okay, it knows when it's getting the real thing and getting a fake thing. Okay, so uh, also, in order for DHA to get in the brain, it needs to be in the SN2 position. So there's three SN positions. SN2 it makes it planar, so it gets into the brain, gets into the central nervous system, into the peripheral nervous system, so that we can basically catch electrons and turn light into a current, an electric current inside of us to heal our body. Okay. Um, but basically, if you have iodine deficiency, you lose your ability to handle reactive oxygen species and you have oxidation occur. Um, so it's like having a house with no insulation and you have no way to contact the fire department. So nature built in a monitoring and regeneration cycles in us that uses oxidation to signal regeneration in us. And there, I do use a iodine supplement as well. Um, so I think it's that important. Um, but you do want to start with food first. So I use Lugol's, it's an iodine iodide combination. And I usually only take one drop a day because I'm usually eating seafood almost every day. I would say throughout the year, 365 days, I probably consume 310 to 330 seafood meals. Uh, you don't need to go that extreme, but the sicker you are, the more DHA and iodine and all those brain minerals you need. So I did do a EpiPaleo diet webinar. Uh, I have two parts. So part one is in the Improvement Warrior University group. And then I think there's links that will take you to get the DHA one. So it's the one I just did completely on DHA. So there's a whole bunch more about DHA that you should know. All right, number three is cooking fats. So this um, cooking fats, basically uh, butter, ghee, tallow, bacon fat, um, the oils, um, um, drawing a blank, extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, avocado oil. Um, with certain oils, you need to be careful though. Um, palm oil is good, but you need to find it. I think it's RSPO is the kind that you need because otherwise palm oil is, it's rancid and it's going to cause bad things. The olive oil, you make sure it's extra virgin olive oil. Make sure it comes in a dark jar, not a light jar. Anything that is light, a light jar, it will be oxidized by the uh, artificial lights and also the UV light if it was exposed to that. Um, 
So yeah, and they did a study showing 73% of all olive oils are uh, basically fake. They're not pure olive oil, okay? Um, so I know one that I used, uh, Kirkland's, Costco's brand was proven to be real olive oil, but 73% is pretty high. So yeah, if you're using it, make sure you vet it properly. But otherwise, I mean, I really don't cook with olive oil. Uh, most of my cooking comes with coconut oil, and I typically do that seasonally. So it's, coconut oil is about to stop for the winter and colder months. But um, it is one of those better cooking fats. Everything comes with a context. So if I say something is seasonal, somebody who has um, some kind of health issue, obesity, brain issues, gut issues, Coconut oil might be something that you would use year round. Um, so everything comes with context. So just always ask questions, always ask questions um, in regards to where you are. Because something that might be the, the best thing ever for one person could completely destroy somebody else. Okay. So it, everything comes with a context and you have to keep asking questions and testing. Testing, testing. So you are your own science experiment. You are the N equals one. You have to become a biohacker if you are going to get healthy. Otherwise, have fun. Um, just spin in the wheel like a hamster. Okay. Uh, number four, eggs. Eggs, properly raised eggs. Um, egg whites, no. Dude, no. Just no. If you're still doing egg white omelets, I want to cuss here, but I try to keep these clean. But it, it, no, no more egg whites. Okay, if you want to do just part of the egg, just do an egg yolk omelet. That's it. All the protein, all the vitamins, all the nutrients, all the cholesterol, good cholesterol, okay, is in the yolk. Okay. In the white, you have basically nothing. You just got protein and 0.3 carbohydrates. That's it. Okay. Duck eggs are better than chicken eggs. You got more DHA in the eggs. There is DHA in eggs, but not, not much, but it's better than nothing. Um, but duck eggs do have more and they got more fat and they're a lot more tastier. However, um, cooking, will denature the protein. Cooking will denature any protein that you cook. So if you can, eat it raw, if possible. Um, yeah, so that's it. Um, yeah. What's up, Ian? Welcome, I'm on number four now. So we just covered eggs. All right, uh, that's pretty much all I gotta say about the eggs and obviously cook them in the proper uh, cooking oil don't cooking fats don't do don't do the um the toxic seed oil so sunflower oil um canola oil soybean oil corn oil any of that stuff that the top the seed oils are the absolute worst thing that you can consume um, i've heard they take x years to um to detox from your body all right uh, number five is properly raised meats. Okay, so this is going to be your your grass fed beef, um, your pastured pork, your um, uh, grass fed grass finished. Because there are people who grass fed grass feed their cows um, up to a certain point, and then they'll start feeding them grain to get them fatter and they'll have to, they want that marble look so that's just that's bs don't grass fed grass finished is the best and yeah if you can eat it raw eat it raw otherwise try to undercook the meats because remember cooking your meat cooking your proteins denatures the protein um it denatures the uh, the dha uh, so raw is always the best if you can handle it. If not, uh, I mean, don't, don't cook it well done. 
So a well done steak person is not a person you want to be spending time with. <laughs> so, um, and number six, I could have put it in properly raised meat, but it deserves a category all its own, and that is organ meats. So organ meats is basically it's like the multivitamin of foods without the DHA. So DHA should be eaten separately. But you can pretty much get 85 to 90% of all your nutrients from organ meats. So that's liver, heart, kidney, the tongue, <laughs> um, scrotum, testicles. I've never had those. So yeah, if you want those, go ahead, whatever. But um, uh, glutathione, it's um, one of the biggest antioxidants in our body. And we, we can make it, but um, anything, anything that we make, you tend to, like if your body makes it, you don't want to take it uh, with context. So certain people will need to, certain people should not. Um, just depends on where you are in your road to recovery or your optimal health journey. Um, so with glutathione, human beings, we synthesize it. Um, despite what the supplement industry will tell you, um, because supplement industry, they want to sell you supplements. And, uh, glutathione, I believe, is one that you should stay away from because we, we can make it. Uh, they don't really do too much for the body. Um, specific, specifically, our stomach acid will destroy glutathione. So you'll be, you swallow it, you'll basically be throwing the money away. Um, raw heart will give you the most glutathione. So heart is supposed to have the most uh, glutathione and that's supposed to help us the most in there. So if you can eat your organ meats raw, uh, if not, um, one way, if one way to get your, your organ meats and your raw eggs and your seafood. And if you don't like it is to put it in a smoothie. Okay. So, um, I'll post up a link of my smoothies, but I basically put all that in there. Seafood, uh, organ meats, raw eggs, put it all in there. So it's a super, super food. Okay. All right. Number seven is mushrooms. Okay. Deserves a category all on its own. Um, mushrooms, I don't think they have too much of a taste. So I basically put them on pretty much everything. And that's another thing. If you don't like mushrooms, you can put them in a smoothie or just mix it up with a bunch of things. So mix it up with the a salad, mix it up with, mix it up in your, uh, egg, scrambled eggs. Okay. Um, mix it up in your, your casseroles. Okay. So they don't really have too much of taste, but the benefits of them, they're one of the foods, one of, um, I think onions and mushrooms are like the only non meat, non protein food that has, uh, vitamin D in it. And mushrooms are not a vegetable. They are a fungus. They can grow pretty much anywhere. They can grow in the Arctic Circle. They can grow pretty much anywhere. So they are um, just one of the foods that have tremendous benefits. There's all different kinds. There's um, medicinal mushrooms. There's nutritional mushrooms. There's the kind that you just go woo woo go high on i've never tried those but um from the people that i follow they they swear by it so mushrooms number seven all right number eight is onions so I just mentioned those so onions um my onions and mushrooms are pretty much the uh the vegetables that i eat year round um, everything else i try to stick with seasonally uh, well, also I do seaweed and I'll do an occasional avocado, but I tend to let my kids and wife have the avocados when we do have them, um, especially in the winter, the colder months. But onions are, they are delicious and they are very beneficial and they are one of the higher sulfur items as well. So sulfur, um, so we're, we need, sulfated cholesterol to make sulfated vitamin D. Um, onions is one of the things that can help with the, um, the sulfur. 
thing. Okay? And only the sun can make sulfated vitamin D. If you get vitamin D in a supplement or a pill, that's not sulfated vitamin D. Remember, your body knows the difference between these things. Oops. Okay. Um, and then another thing with uh, onions is that it helps to decrease histamine release. Um, so an important health-producing ingredient in onions is quercetin. And studies have shown that if you bake, saute, or roast, or fry your onions, that increases their quercetin or quercetin quercetin uh, content. It's Q U E R C E T I N, and that uh, quercetin is what is going to help um, reduce allergic responses and also boost immunity. Um, but back to histamine. Histamine causes many food allergies or sensitivities because it releases when the environment is filled with non-native EMF, so electro pollution. And that basically causes calcium efflux to, calcium is supposed to be um, tightly coupled inside the cell, but when it's around bad light and bad signals, Wi-Fi, 5G, 4G, 2G, 3G, all that stuff, it basically comes out of the cell. And when that happens, then, um, you get a, uh, a release of uh, histamine. And sunlight is the natural calcium blocker. So if you're taking a natural calcium blocker, stop taking it and get out into the sun more. And you should be able to get off of that. Um, but most, most, people have, uh, most people with gut issues, it's not really the food that's causing it, it's the non-native EMF, the electropollution that is causing the problem. And you might not really have a food sensitive sensitivity to that problem. You might just, you might not have to remove that food forever. Um, you just have to switch your non-native EMF environment, which I know for a lot of people uh, is probably even harder than giving up the food because people don't want to give up their phones. So they're addicted to it. Okay. Um, yeah, and onions are one of the, they're a high allergy food, but they, they shouldn't be as long as you're following the rules of nature, but we're not going to get into too much of that here. Okay. Um, and also if you are taking anti histamine, that will simply make you more sensitive to the sun and that it will make you more prone to burning. It will make you, uh, have wrinkles um, when you're out of the sun. So the sun isn't the problem. It's the, the stupid thing that stupid people are, or uh, it's the stupid thing that doctors and dermatologists and people are recommending that people do that is causing the problems. So antihistamines will make you burn more, they'll make you have wrinkles, skin cancer, all the bad things that people say about the sun. But when you take an antihistamine, you can't build up your solar callus. So that's what I talk about all the time. You have to build up your solar callus in order to, um, in order to build up your melanin. So you're basically your skin color, your tan. And when you do that, that's melanin is the most photoprotective thing in our body. Okay. So it's our natural sunscreen. And, um, yeah. So, and, if you're taking an antihistamine, you can't build up that solar callus. So you'll always be basically, you won't be able to tan. So you'll be more prone to burning, you'll get wrinkles, skin cancer, all the bad things that are associated or they say is associated with the sun, but it's the people that are doing it wrong. You have to build up that callus. So you're able to absorb more UV light. So UV and red light is the most beneficial uh, light frequencies out there but they're also the ones that we cannot see. So that is not by coincidence. But your mitochondria can see and sense and feel them, and that is how they are driven, and our mitochondria is what powers our bodies. Number nine, we have in-season fruits and veggies. So in season, so this is more of a circadian nutrition type of thing. 
with circadian nutrition, you want to eat as seasonally and as locally as possible. So I am recording this at the end of October. And so this is when pretty much in Ohio, um, apples is the only fruit that is still in season. And that's pretty much another, I'd say 10 days and they're gone. But then you've got your squashes. You've got the butternut squash, acorn squash, pumpkins that will still be in season probably all the way through November. And then all those go away. Um, there's no berries. There's no watermelon in season. So you have to follow. There's, um, if you go to like your farmer's in season uh, guide, it will tell you what fruit, what vegetable is in season and the time frame that they're in season that you, that you can eat them. So the reason for that is if you eat, let's say, I always pick on the, the banana because bananas in Ohio, they don't grow here ever. And you want to eat as local as possible because the reason is, um, say it's December here in Ohio, the UV would only get up to two. Bananas come from Chile, Argentina, which you've got a UV of 11, 12. I don't, I've never been there, but I'm assuming 13, 14, somewhere around there. So when you eat, you eat light, okay? So you are eating that UV light. And when you eat it, the food breaks down to electrons. Remember at the beginning, I told you photons can only interact with electrons. So when you eat the food, eat the carbohydrate, eat the banana, you're eating that light. And that light goes in to signal to the mitochondria, okay? Give the energy, give the information to the mitochondria. Mitochondria expects something, expects a, a certain type of food in the winter. It doesn't expect the 14 UV food to come in. That creates cell chaos, which leads to inflammation, which leads to a cellular breakdown. Okay. It's a circadian mismatch. So circadian rhythm, circadian biology is the number one thing for our health. But if we continue to have circadian mismatches, the more we have, the faster we age, the faster our respiratory proteins in our mitochondria stretch out, which is known as percent heteroplasmy. When that happens, okay, we start to have diseases of aging. So once you pass 50%, 60%, 70%, the diseases are going to get worse and worse. But it always starts with energy problems. Okay. Um, your body will always give you clues something is going wrong. Okay. All disease is a form of inflammation. Okay. And when we eat out of season, then certain things will happen. Now, again, there's certain foods that I eat that are out of season year round, but they're, uh, remember, I'm, I'm not as sick. I'm not sick. Um, like I used to be. So. But uh, you have to take that with context. So you have to say, where am I in terms of my health? And the where you are in terms of your health, if you're way down and you have a big disease and say you have autoimmunity, you're going to have to stick with the rules a little bit closer. Okay. So my, my rules, the circadian nutrition rules, the circadian biology rules are going to be way different than your typical dietitian or your typical personal trainer. Okay. If you were talking to me six years ago, I would have told you, I would have told everybody to eat the same thing. Eat six times a day. Um, eat oatmeal. Eat, oh, I wouldn't do oatmeal. Um, that was 10 years ago, but, um, yeah, oatmeal's bad. Don't eat oatmeal. But, um, yeah, I would have prescribed the exact same protocol for every single person. Okay. But in that, I was, I was always wondering why does, why do some people get results? Why do others get no results? Why do others get results for some time, period of time? And then they completely fall off the wagon. Okay. Now I know. Okay. All right. But in season fruits and veggies. Um, and then number 10. So number 10, I had to, I threw out 
dark chocolate. Okay, so that would be number 11. But number 10, I put as honey. Okay, but you want well sourced honey. Uh, organic doesn't really mean healthy. Uh, I mean, they make organic Oreos and organic animal crackers. Okay, you should know, obviously, don't eat that. And if you don't know, don't eat organic animal crackers. Just because they put the packaging on the package, okay, and usually if it's in a the package, then we should be questioning whether we're eating it. Um, they're trying to sell it to you. Okay, They're trying to manipulate your mind and get you to eat it because they're big food. They want you to consume it, and they make billions of dollars off of that. All right, but uh, well-sourced, um, because I know they found glyphosate was found in U.S. honey. Um, glyphosate replaces glycine in our proteins. Collagen is the number one protein in our body that uses glycine. So um, if you consume too much glyphosate, basically that collagen will turn to gelatin. And basically you'll be more brittle and prone to ACL tears, falls. When you fall down, you break something that you shouldn't break. And okay. so, um, yeah, so well-sourced honey. Um, yeah, and then dark chocolate's number 11. But so that is, that is basically it. Um, yeah, if you, if you do have further questions on this or you want to take a deeper dive into nutrition with me, I do have several nutrition challenges. The, probably the biggest ones are my 47-day keto challenge improvementwarriorfitness.com slash keto challenge. And then you also have a paleo challenge, 30 day paleo challenge, improvementwarriorfitness.com slash paleo four. I believe that is. And then I also do um, nutrition coaching as well. Um, uh, meal plans and, and whatnot. But again, if you do nutrition coaching with me, I do not just do nutrition coaching. I obviously teach you about the sun and everything because like I said, any nutrition plan that does not have the sun is only a band-aid and eventually you will fall apart without the sun. Okay, but that is pretty much it for that, um, for the 10 foods, superfoods that should be in yours and your kids' nutrition plan. Do Ian, do you have any questions? Um, man, I had one. I lost it. I kind of came in late. Mm -hmm. It took me a bit to find the link. Uh, I can't, I can't think of it right now. Okay. No problem. Well, it comes just posted on the, on the replay. And if you are watching the replay, just, um, Feel free to leave a comment down below and I will answer that question. And also don't forget to invite your friends, family into the group so they can watch this uh, webinar and future webinars as well. So again, thank you guys for watching and have a great day. Stay strong, stay positive, be the improvement warrior. We are always looking for ratings for the podcast. It helps my podcast be found by others looking to improve their life and health, as well as it helps us get ranked higher. So please help us out so that I may continue bringing this life-changing podcast to you and others around the world. Just go to the leave a review section of your favorite podcast listening app and let us know what you think. Five stars is preferred, but please be honest. Thank you in advance. Blocking blue light is one of the most critical things we need to do in our modern world if you want to either remain healthy, reverse a disease, or become the optimal version of yourself. There are a lot of companies out there that are now making it more stylish than ever to join the ranks of biohackers across the world. Oh, and blue blockers are absolutely essential for keeping your dopamine levels up and exiting the matrix. I have personally been using Midwestern Light Therapy as my go-to errand and grocery store 
as well as my After Sunrise glasses. Check them out as well as the others I have used and recommend at improvementwarriorfitness.com slash blueblockers. For Midwestern Light Therapy, use code IMPROVEMENTWARRIOR10 for 10% off. And you can also pick out blue light free light bulbs as well as red light therapy devices. Remember, your light environment is more important for your health than the food you eat or the exercise that you do.